Ooh, strawberries. Don't mind if I do. everyone welcome back to the workshop i hope you're all keeping well now in this video i'm going to be making a large garden corner sofa complete with coffee table and it's a nice simple construction this like everything i've done for the garden projects so far i've kept it all very basic and very simple so this is completely made from four by two or two by four construction number if you have yourself a miter saw and a screw gun you can absolutely make this no problem and it's twice as big and half the price of anything you will buy in the shop and it will last you a lot longer as well so it's really good and sturdy it's lovely and comfortable it's perfect for lounging in it's also a two-piece construction and there's an advantage to building it this way not having our cushions continue all the way around which i will show you at the end of the video this in operation now unfortunately in the time of making this video the irish weather as always has not cooperated so it's been raining all week it is june we went from extremely hot weather to rain as soon as I built this. So I haven't been able to get some shots of it outside in the actual garden under the gazebo, which I wanted. But um, you guys will have to make do of me sitting on it in here in my workshop and enjoying it. So let's crack on. Let's build ourselves a nice big um, corner sofa for the garden. And like I said, it's a simple, simple, super simple construction. And I actually make a pretty horrendous measurement mistake um, in this project, which takes me halfway through the project to realize what I've done, but it actually works out to my advantage. So you'll see that in this video as well. So without further ado, let's get on and build ourselves a nice corner sofa for the garden. Okay guys, let's crack on with building our corner sofa. Now, like I said already, I'm gonna keep this a super simple build. So all we need is a drill, a screw gun, a measuring tape, and a miter saw, a few screws, and we can assemble this. And it's gonna be made completely from four by two or two by four construction lumber. Now this is eight foot lengths. I bought 25 eight foot lengths. So hopefully I have enough to make a kind of a little coffee table as well for, the, for this setup. Um, this is not planed all over, so you can buy it planed all over, which will have round edges. This doesn't, so it's a little bit rough. It's a little bit cheaper that way. It's non-pressure treated, but I am going to be painting it. I have some stuff out in my garden that's been out there four or five years, non-pressure treated stuff that I have treated every year myself, and it's holding up fine. So this just keeps the cost down a little bit. It just means I'm going to have to sand every one of these. So I'm going to get an 80 grit sand paper on my sander and I'm going to sand all 25 lengths before I start uh, dimensioning anything up. Just while it's in this state, I can run the sander up and down. It's just to pre-prepare it and then we'll sand it to 120 grit. We can leave the frame, just sand it to 80 grit. That'll be absolutely fine. So that's what we're going to be using. Four by two um, construction lumber. I have 25 length, eight foot lengths of this to make what I need. Hopefully, like I said, a corner sofa and a coffee table. So let me just show you how I'm getting my dimensions and then we'll crack on with the build. Okay guys, let me very quickly go through how we're going to establish our dimensions for this corner sofa. Now this is going to be different for everybody depending on the space you have to fit yours in and the type of cushions you used. Now, don't give me a hard time about my cushions. My wife likes jazzy colors. That's why she went for this mosaic pattern. So it is what it is. She picked them, not me, but I think it's going to look lovely with a nice gray, um, sofa. So this is how you establish your dimensions. Like I said, pick your cushions. You're going to build it to suit your cushions. I'm going to have this L-shaped pattern, so I'm going to build it in two sections. Making it in two sections makes it a lot easier to handle, so you can carry it around, move it around, take it back apart again if you do any maintenance work on it. It's better to have it in two sections rather than one big L section, because that is too hard to carry. So our first section is going to be a long section. So measure your two cushions or your three cushions, four cushions, whatever length you want to make it. That's 2.2 meters that way. And this is going to be a separate section here, which will just go together. And we have 1.1 meter this way, or 43 inches. Now, to establish the width of your frame, it's going to be a little bit different. It's not the width of the cushion. So I have my four by twos spaced out here. Actually, I'll get you in for a closer look at this. Okay, to get the width of our bench top, I just have a couple of offcuts of four by two here just to illustrate this. So I want a slight overhang on my cushion. So I want my cushion to be slightly wider at the front so that your legs are not sitting on the corner of a four by two. They'll actually be sitting or hanging off the edge of the cushion. It'll be a lot more comfortable that way. So it's going to be four four by twos, which will be the width of my cushion space with a gap between them. And then I want one four by two on the back here because we're going to make our backrest off this. So essentially, my measurement for this 
is 540 or just over it's about 21 and a half inches that gives me a little overhang off the front of this 4x2 and it gives me a width of a full 4x2 at the back here because we will be building our back frame off that to rest our back against so that's how I establish the width and the length of this couch or sofa Okay, so that's the width and the length. Now you want to establish the height. Now a standard seat is around 18 inches. So that's roughly about 460 millimeters. That's a standard, say, kitchen chair or anything like that. I want to keep these a little bit smaller, a little bit lower, so you kind of sit back into them. So I'm going to keep them to the top of my seat will be 400 millimeters or 39 and a half inches, roughly. And then the height of my armrest will be 600 millimeters. So that is just about two feet. So that's the dimensions. I'm going to keep the height of the seat and the height of the armrest at the side. And once we have all those, dimensions established we can get on and make it now like I said I've got a heap of sanding to do so I'm going to get on and do all that sanding and when that's done we'll start dimensioning up this timber and uh, start assembling this it'll be nice and quick let's do it now just before we continue on with this build turns out great by the way I want to thank Tradeify for sponsoring today's video now Tradeify is a complete job management platform designed specifically for tradespeople and it's used by tradesmen and women all over the world so if you're a plumber carpenter electrician painter decorator roofer tiler floorer whatever if you're in the trades and you're on the tools all day you're self-employed and you struggle with your office work I highly recommend you check it out I'm into my 17th year as a self-employed electrician and I use it and it saves me countless hours every week on that office work so it's desktop and mobile based so iOS and Android and it's all your administration and office work in one place everything from quoting for jobs scheduling jobs invoicing for jobs managing a small crew through it tying in with your accountant software at the end of the year it just streamlines that whole process and makes it super simple to generate professional looking documents and track everything so you don't have to carry it up here you can carry it in your phone it's all there on your desktop and like I say it saves headaches and it saves hours in office work every week so definitely check it out and do yourself a favour it'll all be linked below there's also a promo code man and shed which will give you 50% off for your first three months and there's a 14 day free trial no strings attached so you can play around with the full job management platform for 14 days see how it works for you and your business i guarantee you you will like it and it will really help you out so let's get on there check it out and thanks once again for tradeify for sponsoring today's video now let's get back on and build ourselves a lovely garden sofa okay so the first cuts i'm going to do like i said is for the legs slash armrest so i'm going to cut the top part of the armrest which is going to be the exact width of my frame which is 540 mil that's how my one is working out so i've three of those to cut so i have a stop block set up here at 540 mil i have multiple pieces to batch out here so set up a stop block run everything against it and batch out all your pieces that's a nice quick way to do it now any boards that have knots in the end of it like this i'm just going to chop them off because i don't want them um, again i think i have plenty of timber to do what i need to do i don't want to be trying to be screwing through knots or anything like that so if you have knots set right at the end just chop that off and move on so let's batch these out we'll get them assembled and i'll show you how they go together Okay guys, so here's the frame for our legs and our armrest and this is exactly how it's going to go together. So there's our top part of our armrest, so that's going to come out over the end grain of our two uprights. These are two legs. Now I've extended the height of this to 700mm rather than 600mm just because the gap between here and here was a little short. So I extended it by 50mm, this gap here. So that's going to be the top of where our seat will be, or our bench. and. Uh, I think it's just a nicer gap here between the armrests. So the total height of this is now 700 mil rather than 600 mil. So we're going to screw these together. I'm going to be countersinking everything with a 12 mil brad point bit because I want to hide all the screws. So I'll be plugging all these screw holes afterwards. So we have a cross piece here. We have a brace piece here. And then we have this piece. 
Again, it's the exact same width, which is going to fit flush out here. And that's what we're going to fit the frame of our uh, base or our frame of our bench top to. It'll all make sense now when we go to assemble this. So these pieces, you want to batch out loads of these because the frame for your actual bench or the seat part will have the same size cross pieces as this. It's the exact same width as the frame for your leg. So I have a bunch of them stacked right there. So when you're batching out these, cut yourself enough so you have all your cross pieces as well. So nice and simple. It's just going to screw together exactly like this. I get on and do it and I'll show you all three when they're done. Actually just before I screw these together I should just say I'm actually going to add a small bit of wood glue to all these joints just to add a little bit of strength as this thing is going to be sitting outdoors for a long time. So a little bit of glue and then screw. Okay guys, so here's the frame for our armrest and legs made now. So nice and simple cross piece for armrest, two uprights. That's gonna be 700 mil to the top. I've marked two lines here at 400 mil. I've put in a piece here and then I've put in a piece uh, vertically in between here as well. So you can see that sits in there. This will be the inside of the frame. So that sits flush on this side. And we're gonna fix our frame for our actual bench or for the seat part to this and all our boards then will run flush to this one here. It'll make absolute sense when all this has been assembled. And again, I've just drilled all the holes with a 12 mil bit. I will be plugging all these, uh, sanding it all off and painting it and you won't even see those screw holes then when we're finished. And I hit everything with a kind of a chamfer bit or a round over bit as well, just to make sure that there's no rough edges. So we've three of these in total to make, so I'll get on to that now and we'll jump back in. Hey guys, so I have all three of the legs slash armrests all done now, fully assembled, and I've sanded them all up to 120 grit. So they are almost all ready to go now. So do all your sanding before your assembly, it's just gonna make it much easier. So 120 grit for those. Now I just went ahead and made the frames for the seats. I didn't wanna bore you guys with that, it's just very straightforward. So you remember, our long one is gonna be 220 millimeters, the length of two cushions, and the short one, behind me here is 110 millimeters, or sorry, 110 centimeters, uh, 1,100 millimeters, 2,200 millimeters. So that's the length of one cushion, the length of two cushions, and our width, as I showed you how to get the width, and that's the exact same as the leg. So all of these cross pieces are the exact same width as all these cross pieces. So when you're batching them all out, set up your stop lock and cut yourself enough to do your three legs and all your cross pieces for your long and your short side. So it's going to be a case to get this assembled now, but before I do, I just want to run a round over bit around these legs, top and around the bottom for the feet to stop any chip out. So let's do that now. Okay, so I just have a round over bit, small round over bit in the router. I'm just gonna run it around the armrest just so it's nice and comfortable. Put your hand or arm against it and then I'm just gonna do a little round over around the feet again just to stop them splitting out because you're pulling and dragging your chair or your sofa around the place and you leave those square ends on, you can't actually break off or split off the ends. So just a simple round over, not much more to it than that. And again, just gonna take these square edges off the feet, again, just to stop that material splitting off. Okay, so when it comes to attaching our arms and legs to our frame, it's nice and simple. So this piece we've put in here is gonna be our mounting plate and that's gonna to screw to our frame. So this line here on the bottom of this four by two, I wanna keep this edge directly in line with this because all our bench top planks are gonna run and be flush with this guy here. So they're gonna run into this one. So that's your line there, just keep that in line with that. And I'm gonna put plenty of glue on this and screw this from the inside as well. So just gonna get everything lined up. 
my clamps ready. When I'm happy with where that is, I'm just gonna clamp it down. Okay, once I'm happy that I have everything lined up, just take your time, get that right, and you can drive some screws. Now these screws will not be seen on the inside here, so we don't have to do any counter sinking on these, just drive them home. Okay, so all our armrest sash legs are attached to our frame now, so just repeat that step three times. So we have one on that end, which I can't get in shot because it's quite long. We have one here and we have one on the end of this guy. Now, I'm gonna let this section be removable. So I've just clamped it together for now, just to get the height, because obviously I can't put another set of legs here, otherwise you would have an armrest here, then you can't lie across here, which is going to be the idea. So we have to just put some legs down in here now. So rather than using a measuring tape and trying to you know, get to different measurements. Just literally clamp your two sections together. At least then you know when it goes back together, it'll always be the correct height. Just catch your legs then and just drop them in here. So we're gonna have one at the front here, right in the corner, we'll screw that in. Again, those screws won't be seen. Again, I've sanded these up and I've just rounded over the edge and we'll drop another one in there just like that. Screw that guy in place and that'll be the supports for this. And I've also just gonna put another leg in the middle right here just to support this because it's 2.2 meters. That's quite long. Even though I've been standing on this now and sitting on it, it's not flexing, but it'll be no harm. You know, if you could have three or four people, you could actually probably fit five people across this. An extra support in the middle won't go astray at all. So that's uh, probably best to put one in there. And again, it'll be hidden, it won't be seen, so it won't take away from the look. Now, you have a couple of decisions to make here at this point. Because I'm making my one completely uh, detachable, it's not gonna be permanently fixed together, I'm gonna to have a straight rail from here to here to tie these two points together. Now you could do the same on the back here. I see loads of people do that. They're quite comfortable, there's no problem whatsoever. However, I wanna put maybe a 10 or 15 degree slope in the back of my one. So this side is gonna have a sloped back this side is going to have a straight back. That way you can lie here and you can stretch out across here if you so wish. And you have a nice little slope at the back to lean against. So straight side here, sloped side here. If you wanted to do a slope side all around, you would have to rethink how you're going to do this because you'd have to match it all in. That's all. This is nice and quick and simple to make. So that's what we're going to do. So let's crack on and do that. Okay guys, I have made a major mistake in my measurements. Obviously when I set up my stop block, I didn't set it at 540. For some reason, I set it at a different mark that I had made, which was 700. So I was looking at this and I was thinking to myself, that is actually quite wide. And now I put the cushions on it and I have a major gap back here. However, this is actually gonna to work to my advantage. So we're gonna think on our feet and we're gonna solve this problem. So I'm putting a sloped back on this side of the chair. So what's gonna happen is the back of this is gonna slope away. So that's absolutely fine. We still have a nice um, width for your legs and we have a little bit more room you now to slope it back here. So I can now, because I've made them actually wider, I can actually slope this area too. So it just means you won't have a, a rail that runs straight from here to here. The rail will actually be behind the cushion where it won't be seen and you have a little bit of a cushion sticking out in this corner here. But that doesn't matter because nobody can really sit into this corner anyway unless you're lying down and it doesn't obstruct you when you're lying down. So that's quite embarrassing. I got a bit of a shock when I took out my measuring tape and said, hold on a second, this looks a bit wide. But we're actually gonna use this to our advantage. So it is now 700 millimeters in width rather than 540 millimeters in width. And that is a major difference. So let's crack on. What we have to do now is cut all the long boards. I'm gonna set them down. We can't fix them in place yet. And then we're gonna see how we're gonna make the backrest. So I always own up to my mistakes on this channel, but when we make mistakes, if we think on our feet, there's always a way out. Let's crack on. Okay guys, so I have all my planks cut for my bench now, so that's good to go. Now I can't fit these yet, I have to sand all these up to 220 grit, and I also have round over all the edges, so there's a good bit of prep work before I fit these on. Now, the solution I've come up with, obviously I have a gap back here, so what I've done is I've cut a few blocks with a 15 degree angle, top and bottom, so I'm gonna, I just have them screwed in place temporarily now just to see how this is gonna work. So I'm gonna fix these to my each of my cross pieces. So I think it's actually gonna work out quite well, it actually me a nice bit of space on the sofa now. 
So if I drop in the cushion, that cushion is going to sit nicely there like that. And this cushion then is going to sit just like that. And it actually gives me a nice bit of space on the couch with um, a nice backrest to lean against. So that's exactly what we're going to do. It's actually going to work out quite nice. It's going to be nice and comfortable. I think it's actually going to look better. So whether that was divine intervention or I actually knew what I was doing all along, which I doubt, um, it's actually worked out in my favor. So happy days. Now, like I said, I have to get on now and uh, do a good bit of prep work on these before I can fit them. So I've got to take everything back off. I have to paint this frame now first because if I put this stuff on, then I can't paint the frame. It's just going to be impossible. So I have a good bit of work to do. I get on, paint the frame, sand all these up, and we jump back in. So it'll probably be a day or two later for you guys, or for me, but a few seconds for you guys. Okay guys, quick update on exactly where I am. I've kind of done all the boring stuff off camera. It's just a hell of a lot of sanding and painting. So I've painted the frame and I've sanded up all the bench planks and I've also just hit them all the way around with a round over bit as well. So I don't know all that off camera because you guys don't need to be looking at me sanding and painting. Now I've also just fit the uprights for the backrest and again remember we cut these two angles at 15 degrees so 15 degrees is a nice angle to lean back if you don't want to lean back too far 10 degree is another good angle but i wanted these to be kind of lounge chairs that you really just kick back chill out and relax in out in the garden They're not for sitting up eating around the table or anything like that they're literally just for sitting back reading a book and chilling out so having that nice 15 degree on angle on the back is the way to go now obviously my design has changed because of the fact that I made that measurement mistake, but I'm still pretty happy with how this turns out. Obviously, I'm gonna have a bar or a top piece on this now that goes like that. That's gonna finish like that. So these are essentially two independent sofas that come together and you can lie along this way as well. So it's a little bit of a design change this now doesn't all tie together, but it's no big deal. Like I said, it's still going to work out pretty nice. Now, the only thing I'm debating whether to put planks across the front like this or ones in between the uprights. I might even think about putting four by ones across here, just two of them, and then finish the top off with a four by two, just like that. That's kind of my thinking at the minute. I haven't quite decided because again, I'm kind of changing the design slightly because of the measurement mistake. So that's the decisions I have to make, but that's just where I am at the minute. So I sanded them up, rounded them over. They're not fit in place yet. I have to paint all these up now. Then I gotta make a decision what to put on the back. So that's the next thing we're gonna do. So let's crack on and do that. Actually, just before we move on, I just wanna explain exactly how I fit on the uprights for the backrest. So you can see I have a toe screw right here in all of them. And I've also screwed them through the base. So I've screwed them through the four by two. So I've drilled these and drove a hundred mil or four inch screws up into this and they are glued as well and the end ones are also screwed into the armrests so they're good and supported so on both ends of the big one both end ones are screwed into the armrests as well so they're good and strong they'll support a good bit of weight and that's happy days and they'll all be linked together anyway with um, some cross pieces so they will be plenty strong enough so that's how I did it toe screw in the front two screws up underneath glued in place as well and the end ones are screwed to the side as well Okay guys, I've progressed on a little bit further. Again, it's just all the boring stuff and I've done it off camera, so just to give you guys an update, I've painted everything now, but I painted all the planks before I fit them. It's just a good idea so that you can paint the underneath as well. Otherwise, you're gonna make it really, really hard on yourself. Now, I've decided for the back here to go with four by ones, so that's gonna work out really well. Like I said, my original design idea was to have four by twos in between each of the uprights, but this actually works out better and it's gonna push my cushions just a little bit, an inch forward as well. Again, I'm trying to account for that little measurement mistake, but it's actually worked out really well. This long bottom and the 15 degree back is super comfortable, especially when the cushions are on it. Now, obviously this rail doesn't run all the way around and normally when you see people make these, they would tie these two rails together. But again, this has worked out really well, having this right here. And when it's 
it's all assembled and the cushions are on, I'll show you exactly why. Now, I've just screwed down all these. I've screwed them straight through the top. I haven't um, plugged any of these holes. You don't need to do that. Just be careful that you do use uh, good quality outdoor screws, screws that are designed to go outdoors and make sure they're good quality ones because I've used outdoor screws before and they just rusted and broke, especially decking screws. So pay a bit extra, get yourself some good quality screws. They will last a long time. And if your screws fail, then the whole thing falls apart, no matter how much you treat your timber. So your screws are an important part of all this and also using outdoor wood glue, very important as well. So for the decking planks or for the seat planks and the back planks, I've just screwed threads through and just countersunk them a little bit. No need to plug those holes. I will be plugging the holes up on top on the top rail here. And both of the top rails are the exact same size as the bench um, planks. So cut yourself an extra one of these for going up on top. They're the exact same size. Now I'm just going to plug these holes. I'll show you exactly how I plugged the holes in the frame. Now let's do that. Okay guys, so when it comes to plugging the holes in the frame, I'm going to plug them on top here because these will be visible. All the screws in the bench and stuff, they'll be behind the cushions, they'll never be seen. And I've just plugged the ones in the frame. So how I did it, again, like I said, I just drilled a 12 mm hole, drove the screw down through it, and I've went and just made my own plugs. You can see them there. So you can get a plug cut or a bit, you can get them any size, put them into your drill press, and you can cut them out. Then take your piece to your bandsaw run it down the bandsaw and they all just fall out. Now, if you don't have any of those things, don't worry, when you're picking up your timber, just get yourself some dowel, some 10 mil or 12 mil dowel. It'll be just like a pre-made plug for all the work. Chop it into pieces and you can plug all your holes. So then it's only this little case of, get a little bit of wood glue in there. And I'm using type bond tree because it is water resistant and it's suitable for outdoors. And just tap in your plug. Simple as that. Give that a little while for that glue to go off and you can flush them off, sand them off, and then get a couple of more coats of paint on. And it just takes the bad look off these holes away. And again, all this stuff is gonna be behind cushions more or less anyway, so they're not technically gonna be seen. But it's better just to plug the holes just like that um, and paint over them. Again, it just makes it look that little bit nicer. So I'll crack on and do that now. I have a few more coats of paint that I have to get onto this and then we'll jump back in. Okay guys, so while I'm waiting for all that paint to dry, I just quickly whip together a coffee table. Now when I mean whip together, I literally just whip this thing together out of every scrap of off coat that I could find, but nice and simple. So I've just built the frame the same way as we built the arms for the chair, so it's the same thing. I've just screwed a piece of two by four here, so you can see it's just screwed in there. And again, and this is nothing fancy, it's just some garden furniture. I've made this from some off cuts of pressure treated timber. So we have a lip or a an edge hanging out here. That's gonna take our top board. Just make two of those. There'll be a stretcher then go between here and here. Nice and simple. So I'm using up, like I said, every scrap of off cut I could find. So I have some six by twos. I had two pieces of these left. So the coffee table ended up the exact length that the two of these pieces just happened to be. So we're gonna put them there like that. So we'll have two six by twos for a border. And then we'll put some four by twos in the middle, just like that. So it couldn't be simpler. You have yourself a little coffee table whipped together in a few minutes, just from a few off cuts and it makes perfect garden furniture. So just like that. Now I'll screw all this together. I'm gonna to paint it all up first, sand it all up, paint it all up, and then screw it together. So the only piece I have to add is just a stretcher underneath to tie it all together. I'm just gonna screw these from underneath so you won't see the screws on the top. I'm gonna to plug these holes. Let's screw my frame together, just like the chair. Nice and simple, Bob's your uncle. There you go. Okay guys, there we go, all finished up. So the coffee table is painted up and that literally took five minutes to put together out of off cuts. That's gonna make a nice little coffee table. So you can do things cheap and cheerful and uh, quick and easy as well. And just paint them up, it turns out it's quite effective. I'm really happy with how the couch turned out. The 15 degree angle on the back is absolutely lovely. It's great to just lounge in. It's really comfortable. I'm glad I made the measuring mistake, although I'm shocked at myself that um, it took me almost halfway through the project before I realized my measurement mistake. But you know, you live and learn and these are humbling experiences at the end of the day, but all is well that ends well as they say. Now, the advantage of this this build, like I said, not having the cushions continue all the way around, is for the person who's going to lounge here. So if 
you're lounging in this position and you have cushions all the way around there's never anywhere i find to leave your cup say if you're reading a book or you're listening to music constantly stretching over to your coffee table is not much fun so you have a nice little armrest here and somewhere to put your glass of wine your drop of whiskey or your morning coffee which is quite nice and the other advantage to this too is it actually gives you an extra seat technically. So if you have a lot of people around, you're having a garden party, barbecue, whatever, sitting in the corner, it almost takes up two seats either side. So the next person has to sit down here and it's really only a place for maybe you might get one, you'd squash in two here. So separate the chairs, which is the beauty of having it not fixed together. And now you have an extra seat comfortably here. You'll fit four people quite comfortably along here and you'll definitely get two. So that's six people where you may have knocked it down to four by having someone sit in the corner. It's kind of a wasted seat in that regard, especially if you're having plenty of people around. And having it separate like this, like I said, it's much easier for maintenance and it's much easier to move this around as well. If you need to move it in and away for the winter or anything like that, you can do so. And uh, even just lifting it onto your deck, it's quite heavy this so it's a couple of people to move it so having it in two sections makes all the sense in the world and being able to have this option i think is absolutely fantastic as well so there we go okay guys here we go i have it out on the deck under the gazebo i have to say this is absolutely fantastic this is what you call living the life so the sun is trying to come out through these clouds now and it's warming up nicely out here so hopefully you've enjoyed the video hopefully you've got something out of it hopefully it inspires you to get out and make something too like i said these builds are super simple and anybody with a few hand tools can absolutely do them no problem so if you have enjoyed the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you're new here as always think about subscribing comments and questions below let me know what you think of it i would uh, love to hear from you guys as always and i try to answer as many comments as i can so that's it guys i'm going to leave it up here now i think i'm going to go in and grab a beer throw the feet up eat a few strawberries take it easy i'll see you in the next one